my name is Paul Westbrook, and uh, my role at Texas Instruments is I'm on the energy team in facilities. Um, Sustainable Development Manager is the official title, and uh, I work on energy and resource efficiency projects. I've been at TI for almost 29 years now, in facilities the whole time, in the group that designed clean rooms, and then I did some facilities management in the, in the 90s, and, and then the sustainability stuff for, for most of the last decade. Um, always been involved in, to some level, in energy and resource efficiency, uh, but we really ramped it up over the last 10 years. Well, the, uh, the, the similarities uh, kind of came out of the house, actually. We toured uh, Kevin Ritchie through the house when we were talking about building our fab, and we had some good ideas in our facilities organization about things we could really do differently to cut the operating costs. And when we showed Kevin how low my utility bills were here, he got very interested, and he said, how can we make this happen? And so it really is, it's just a scaling up of uh, good practices. Well, come on in and we'll talk about a few of the features of the house. So this is kind of the great room, the living area, the kitchen, the dining room. And, and the first thing you'll notice is we're moving toward winter now and we're getting a lot of sunlight in the house. The house is specifically laid out and the overhangs and the windows are placed so that we get winter sun in, but we block the summer sun out. So we don't get unwanted heat gain, we get wanted gain when we need it. And uh, last night it was in the low, low to mid 40s, I guess. Um, we haven't had the heat on. The house dropped all the way to 70 degrees. And uh, when the sun comes in, which it's doing right now, it'll heat it up to about 77, 78 today. Uh, tonight it'll hold the heat. We'll stay, we'll just bounce around in the 70s without using any air conditioning or any heat. So that's, that's a passive solar design. It's, there's no mechanical issues to work. It's just, it's just quiet and, and efficient. You can see we have good daylighting in the house, and there is a bank of windows. If you want to step in the kitchen, you can actually look back up. There's, there's a bank of high windows called clerestory windows, and these do a couple things for us. One, they give us great natural daylighting, uh, balances out, and two, they're on electric operators, and I can actually open these at night. And so on a, when it's a little warmer, about a month ago, when the nights were cool and the days were hot, we could open the windows at night, flush the, the heat will naturally rise, flush the house out with cool air, close it up during the day, and we would make it through the hot, the hot part of the day without any air conditioning. This is a, a giant ice cream sandwich, actually. Um, no, this, is, this is what the house is made of. This one sits out in the weather and it's a little bit beaten up, but the walls and ceiling of this house are made from structural insulated panels. And it's got a foam core, oriented strand board on the side, and there are no studs in the wall. The, the skin carries the structural load. And what that does for us is it gives us a, a solid core of insulation that's airtight and consistent. And so it's very much like a ice chest. When we heat or cool the house and close it up, it stays warm or cool. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't leak heat or have air coming in. And the cat seems to enjoy it quite well. So we're in my mechanical room. Um, a lot of the things we did with the house were passive. Uh, the good insulation, windows in the right place, overhangs in the right place, those kind of things. We reduce the amount of heating or cooling that we need. But when we do need heating or cooling, we have uh, a very, very efficient system to do that. And it's, a, it's called geothermal heat pump. And how this differs from a typical air conditioner or heat pump is we don't have a, a fan coil unit outside that's rejecting heat. We have some shafts in the ground, 220 feet deep, that we run tubing down and back, and we use the earth as a big heat exchanger. So we turn the electricity off and we get our water heated by the sun. And it's, it's morning right now and the sun's just coming up and hitting the panel. And the water coming back from the roof is about 115 degrees. If you came back later today, it would be probably at 170, 180, maybe as high as 200 degrees Fahrenheit coming back. goes through a heat exchanger and we just dump the heat into the tank. So we can come home from a... Today's a very sunny day. At the end of today, we'll have a full tank of 140, 150, sometimes 160 degree water stored up. 
So we have we have two large rainwater collection tanks. Um, the gutters just drop down into these. They're 1,600 gallons each. And so when it rains, an inch of rain will put about uh, six or 700 gallons in these tanks for us. And we use this for all outdoor uses. Any lawn watering, washing the cars, cleaning the house outside. Uh, so we don't have to purchase any, any city water. We have all native, native landscape, and so we don't irrigate anything. Uh, but the rainwater is collected and used for anything outside. So we were on the inside and we saw the tank and the hot water coming back from the roof and how that water is heated is the two large panels up here on the roof are flat plate uh, solar water heating panels. And the sun comes in, heats the black uh, coated plate, there's tubing, there's little tubes that run through there, picks up the heat, brings it back, just cycles through and, uh, and heats our water for us. So most of the... Uh, my average electric bill for the last 15 years has been about uh, $80 a month, which is about a third of a, uh, what a house this size would normally run. In 2006, we added this wind turbine that you see here. Um, I was a beta tester for them, and uh, it's very calm today, so it's not actually turning very much. Uh, you can see it rotate a little bit as the breeze blows. Um, this turbine is pretty hampered by my sight. I have a lot of trees, which is a good thing but it's not good for wind. So location, location, location are very important for wind turbine. I'm, I'm a beta tester for them. Um, it outputs, uh, you know, on, if it were on a clear site, it'd be about 250 kilowatt hours a month. I'm significantly less than that because of the, the, uh, the trees that block some of the breeze, but um, I call it the kinetic lawn sculpture. Um, it's, a, it's a great showstopper. People stop on the street and ask me about it all the time. A lot of times I get asked about, uh, is our TI technology in anything? Well, the wind turbine we saw actually has uh, six TI chips in it, including the two main uh, C2000 processors that, that handle all of the grid synchronization, uh, waveform. I mean, all the smarts of that wind turbine are, uh, are from T TI technology. A lot of other things in the house, uh, it's a DLP TV over there, obviously, um, which is TI technology. Power saving and you know, wall warts. Um, you know, even things like thermostats, the, the ground source heat pump, there's a fan in there, you could have motor control. Many, many opportunities um, in a house. In fact, they're just kind of hidden and scattered everywhere. Uh, we have such a broad chip set that we can cover uh, a lot of bases. And it's not many of us that get the, the chance to build from scratch and do everything. Um, so mostly you're dealing with existing homes. And, and I always tell them that every house is unique and your particular house has a few key weaknesses. So if you really are serious, probably the best thing to do is invest a little money in a good, thorough energy audit of the home. And, and a good auditor will give you a checklist of you know, the steps that you should take for your particular house to make it better. Uh, I guess you know th this is a, a bit of passion and a bit of engineering and a bit of science. And um, you know, I think a lot, a lot of people are definitely interested. A lot of people, everyone is interested in saving money. So. There are habits you can change. There are small steps you can do. Um, again, I mentioned energy audit. If you really wanted to go to go big time, um, I've got some tips up on my website. I've got a website that I did about the house, and I have one page dedicated to tips for existing homes. Um, so you can look on there. You can get a few ideas. And uh, I think the most important thing is don't just sit around. Find something and do it. Even if you think it's small, if all of us do something small, then it adds to something quite large.